Now that you have completed the lab, let's dive deeper into the compute options that are available to you in GCP by focusing on CPU and memory. You have three options for creating and configuring a VM. You can use the GCP console, as you did in the previous lab, the Cloud Shell command line, or the RESTful API. If you'd like to automate and process very complex configurations, you might want to programmatically configure these through the RESTful API by defining all the different options for your environment. If you plan on using the command line or RESTful API, I recommend that you first configure the instance through the GCP console, and then ask Compute Engine for the equivalent REST request or command line, as I showed you in my demo earlier. This way, you avoid any typos and get drop-down lists of all the available CPU and memory options. Speaking of CPU and memory options, let's look at all the different machine types that are currently available. A machine type specifies a particular collection of virtual hardware resources available to a VM instance, including the system memory size, vCPU count, and maximum persistent disk capability. GCP offers several machine types that can be grouped into two categories. Predefined machine types, these have fixed collection of resources, are managed by Compute Engine, and are available in multiple different classes. Each class has a predefined ratio of gigabytes of memory per virtual CPU. These are the standard machine types, high memory, high CPU, memory optimized, compute optimized, and shared core machine types. There are also the custom machine types, and these let you specify the number of virtual CPUs and the amount of memory for your instance. Let's explore each of these machine types, but remember that these machine types and their variable options can change. Standard machine types are suitable for tasks that have a balance of CPU and memory needs. Standard machine types have 3.75 gigabytes of memory per virtual CPU. The virtual CPU configurations come in different intervals from 1 vCPU all the way to 96 vCPUs as shown on this table. Each of these machine supports a maximum of 128 persistent disks with a total persistent disk size of 64 terabytes, which is also the case for the high memory, high CPU, memory optimized, and compute optimized machine types. High memory machine types are ideal for tasks that require more memory relative to vCPUs. High memory machine types have 6.5 gigabytes of system memory per vCPU. Similar to the standard machine types, the vCPU configurations come in different intervals from two vCPUs all the way to 96 vCPUs as shown on this table. High CPU machine types are ideal for tasks that require more vCPUs relative to memory. High CPU machine types have 0.9 gigabytes of memory per vCPU. Memory optimized machine types are ideal for tasks that require intensive use of memory with higher memory to vCPU ratios than high memory machine types. These machine types are perfectly suited for in-memory databases and in-memory analytics, such as SAP HANA and business warehouse workloads, genomic analysis, and SQL analysis services. Memory optimized machine types have more than 14 gigabytes of memory per vCPU. These machines come in four configurations as shown in this table, with only the N1 Mega Mem 96 supporting a local SSD as of this recording. Compute optimized machine types are ideal for compute intensive workloads. These machine types offer the highest performance per core on Compute Engine. Built on the latest generation Intel scalable processors, the Cascade Lake, C2 machine types offer up to 3.8 gigahertz sustained all core turbo and provide full transparency into the architecture of the underlying server platforms, enabling advanced performance tuning. C2 machine types offer much more computing power, run on a newer platform, and are generally more robust for compute-intensive workloads than the N1 high CPU machine types. Shared core machine types provide one virtual CPU that is allowed to run for a portion of the time on a single hardware hyperthread on the host CPU running your instance. Shared core instances can be more cost effective for running small, non-resource intensive applications than other machine types. There are only two shared core machine types to choose from. They are the F1 micro and the G1 small. The F1 micro machine types offer bursting capabilities that allow instances to use additional physical CPU 
for short periods of time. Bursting happens automatically when your instance requires more physical CPU than you originally allocated. During these spikes, your instance will opportunistically take advantage of available physical CPU in bursts. Note that bursts are not permanent and are only possible periodically. For up-to-date information about all of these machine types, see the link section of this video. If none of the predefined machine types match your needs, you can independently specify the number of vCPUs and the amount of memory for your instance. Custom machine types are ideal for the following scenarios. When you have workloads that are not a good fit for the predefined machine types that are available to you, or when you have workloads that require more processing power or more memory, but you don't need all of the upgrades that are provided by the next larger predefined machine type. It costs slightly more to use a custom machine type than equivalent predefined machine type. And there are still some limitations in the amount of memory and vCPUs you can select. Only machine types with one virtual CPU or an even number of virtual CPUs can be created. Memory must be between 0.9 gigabytes and 6.5 gigabytes per virtual CPU by default. The total memory of the instance must be a multiple of 256 megabytes. By default, a custom machine can have up to 6.5 gigabytes of memory per virtual CPU. However, this might not be enough memory for your workload. So at an additional cost, you can get more memory per virtual CPU beyond the 6.5 gigabytes limit. This is referred to as extended memory, and you can learn more about this in the link section of this video. The first thing you want to consider when choosing a region and zone is the geographical location in which you want to run your resources. This map shows the current and planned GCP regions and the number of zones. For up-to-date information on the available regions and zones, see the documentation linked for this video. Each zone supports a combination of Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge, Haswell Broadwall, and Skylake platforms. When you create an instance in the zone, your instance will use the default processes supported in that zone. For example, if you create an instance in the US Central 1A zone, your instance will use the Sandy Bridge processor.